so let's say you're an expert witness in a medical case. And uh, the situation is you had a patient who just had a new stem cell based um, uh, arthritis procedure done on her hip to relieve her hip arthritis. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work. Uh, she got a little bit of inflammation, but no actual improvement. And uh, she blames the doctor for having done it wrong. The doctor claims that she just wasn't a, a great patient for this, or that she wasn't uh, re really the right kind of person for this, and that he warned her about that in advance. And so we're going to go through here, try to look over the facts, and see if we can make some sense of what's going on. So to start with, uh, it'd be good to understand a little bit more about what the uh, ASCA, American Stem Cell Association, uh, says about uh, these kinds of procedures. And, and obviously, uh, I've picked fake procedures and everything fake for the purposes of the demo. Uh, so we'll start by going to, uh, or maybe stepping back a, a moment. So th this is the Liquitex screen I'm showing you now. And uh, the way Liquitex is set up, on the left, you have your documents. On the right, you have a workspace where you can take notes and things like that. Um, over all the way far on the left over here, we have uh, your list of documents that you're using for this particular project. You can organize them into folders as I have here, and you have some of the tools that you need as well. So let's begin with this. Let's start by looking at the regulatory bodies folder where I've already pulled in some of the documents I'll need. And so we have the American Stem Cell Association best practices. And so I'll open that up. And uh, so to begin with, I'm gonna make a little note in my workspace, make a little text box and say, uh, is this patient a good candidate? Because again, the doctor's claiming that she wasn't, we're a little skeptical here. So let's see what we can find. So as we start reading the ASCA best practices, we see that they make an important note here. They say most adults are actually good candidates for this cartilage regeneration procedure. Well, that's important. So I selected that text. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drag that text out into the workspace like this and actually connect these guys together. So notice the first thing I did. I, I saw important information in one of my documents and I can just bring it right out and organize it over here in my workspace. Okay, well, that's helpful, but they mention a little bit later, they talk about figure one for a more detailed algorithm to decide who's a good candidate. Well, I wanna look at that algorithm, but I also wanna compare it to the text I'm reading now. Well, normally when you wanna compare something to things that are on different pages, it's actually pretty awkward. But with Liquitex, we said, you know, we want to let you see the important things together. So I can take two fingers and just squeeze the document. So I'm pinching the document with two fingers. You can also do it with a mouse, um, but I'm using my fingers in this case. And I'm squeezing the document to bring the pages together. And look what's happening. They're crunching together like they're made of rubber. So now I can view the algorithm uh, in the form of this flow diagram next to the text side by side, even though they're on different pages. Okay, that's actually pretty powerful. So I wanna keep track of this flow diagram. So I'm gonna take it, actually, we don't want all that. I'll select the piece of it that I'm looking for here. And then we will just take it and drag it out into the workspace. So you see, I can take, I can take text, I can take pictures all very, very easily and organize them together like this. Well, that's great. And now I'd like to find out a little bit more and see, you know, what, what's the history of this patient? Was she actually a good candidate for this? So I'm going to go and go over to my documents portion all, all the way on the right here. And uh, I see patient medical record. I'll open that. And here's our patient medical record for Arlene McCaffrey. And we'll scroll down a little bit. And we see, we already have highlighted here some of the problems that she has. Well, she has, uh, she has diabetes, hypertension, and of course the arthritis. Now let's do a quick comparison here and look over this flow diagram. And if we look it over, we can see she's under 65. She's not immune compromised. She has no history of carcinomas, but she does have high blood pressure. So we can circle this here and you see she's in the closely monitor, ca monitor category. So, you know, the surgeon wasn't entirely wrong. This is something to keep in mind. So I'll make a little note here saying, uh, Patient is in the closely monitor category. Okay. So that, that's an important start. Uh, so what next? Well, you know, why don't we see how the doctor actually did this procedure and find out, you know, maybe the doctor did it right. Maybe the doctor made some mistakes. Let's do a little bit more investigation here. So to that end, I'll go next to this and I'll make another little text box. I'll say, 
uh, how a doctor performed the procedure. We'll just tag this green as well. Okay. So to look this up, uh, I'll go back. I'll go back to my documents list on the left. Open depositions, and I see there's the deposition uh, from the surgeon. So let's open that and uh, and learn a little bit about how the doctor did this. So I've already gone through this deposition and I've highlighted the specific steps the doctor took, um, but I kind of like to see all the steps together. Now again, there's that problem that they're on different pages, they're spread apart, there's a lot of content between them, so, but with liquid text we have again these features for letting you see the important things together. So I'm going to select this over on the top left here. I'm going to select highlight view. The highlight view is, is one of the most striking things in liquid text. You can now just you either using your mouse or your fingers, you can just squeeze the document. And now it brings all of my highlighted materials together with as much or as little context as I need. And it's dynamic. So I can just squeeze and change this right as I'm reading. So super powerful, super unique. So let's take a look at this now. So what do we find? Well, we see that first of all, uh, they took the stem, they took a stem cell culture that they received as part of the treatment package and they grew it. So I'm gonna take each of these little points I highlighted and just pull them out over to the left here like this. Okay, so you see that one, they prepped her for surgery. Okay, very reasonable. Uh, they did a blood pressure and blood sugar check, very reasonable. Uh, they performed the incision and then they inserted a dissolving joint spacer. Let's see, and then the attorney asked, did you do anything before that? Oh. Well, that's actually important because notice the doctor didn't actually give this testimony in order. So one of the nice things we're gonna do here in the workspace is now we can rearrange it from the way it's written in the document and arrange it for the way that makes sense for us, uh, and which in this case is in order. So he said that first of all, one of the things they did is they dried the bone fascia. Okay, that's actually potentially really important here. So we'll take this out. And he says, they removed all the synovial fluid in the joint. We'll take this out too. That's also really important. Uh, and then let's see, then they applied the dissolving joint spacer. They applied the ICM matrix gel. That's the preparatory gel that you need before you can put these stem cells on. They let it set for 15 minutes. They discovered a small bone spur on the femur. Okay, and they shaved it off. I suppose that's not a problem. Then they applied the stem cell culture. And finally, they closed the patient up. Okay, well, doesn't sound unreasonable offhand. Uh, so, you know, why don't we, why don't we go look at what the uh, manufacturer's instructions are, and, uh, uh, and and see what they say. So let's go and uh, we'll close depositions. We'll go to Galaxidrin. Galaxidrin is the name of the uh, of the system they were using. Galaxidrin product info. And so we'll go to the product manual from Telenova Biosciences here, and we'll just scroll down. And they have the overview of the application process of how they uh, of how you're supposed to use this. So what do we find here? Well, let's see. Uh, they talk about the the pre-op. They talk about uh, bone prep, cartilage prep, prepare the joint, uh, apply the matrix gel. Uh, they say it's very important that uh, uh, that it be left on exactly exactly 15 minutes. So. A little prettier. There we are. Exactly 15 minutes. Remove the excess. Uh, add, put on the stem cell cultures, and so on. Well, from the looks of it, it, it actually seems like they follow this procedure to the letter. Like I don't see anything here that uh, that suggests any problems. So what what could be going on? Uh, you know, maybe we should take a look at the FDA approval notes uh, from uh, when they did their phase three trials for galaxidrin. Maybe that would give us some more insights in into what might have caused this, you know, this odd situation that this patient had. So we'll go to regulatory bodies and we have the phase three trials for galaxidrin. So, you know, the whole tons and tons of information from these phase three trials, but let's just do a quick word search here for inflammation. And notice it's really great doing searches in liquid text. I can just start typing and it brings up the search dialogue that lets me indicate where and how I want to do the search. And so I'll just search this document. And it found, it found a few examples of uh, inflammation in these uh, phase three trial notes, but I'd kind of like to see them all together to see if there's any, any connections between them. So I'm gonna, again, 
just squeeze the document with my fingers here and look what happens. All of the instances of this term of inflammation in this case, squeeze together with again, just like the highlights with as little or as much context as I need. So I can see them all together. It's almost like I can pivot this document on a word or a phrase. Okay, so I look here and I see something really, really significant. In this example, in this instance, it says joint inflammation coincided with the failure of the treatment. It's in the case of one patient, in a case where the administering surgeon only applied the preparatory gel for two minutes instead of the normal 15 minutes. Well, that's actually really significant. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna take that uh, and pull that out here. So in theory, you know, the doctor claims that he did for, that, uh, that he let the gel sit for 15 minutes, but this is pretty significant. So I'm gonna just take this, pull it out and uh, just put it over here next to my notes. Okay, so, so now I'm wondering if maybe I'm starting to see what's going on. Maybe the doctor didn't really apply it for 15 minutes. So let's go back into the depositions here and let's open up what the nurse said because she was also deposed. And uh, so if we look at the lead nurse's deposition, we can go through and basically do the same thing. We can turn on highlight view, squeeze it together, see all the different things that she mentioned. And let's see if there's anything here that could be an interesting starting point. Well, you know, she mentioned, talks about the bone spur and, and so on. And she says, yeah. And, and she actually says right here that as soon as the timer hit 15 minutes, they use suction to remove the ICM matrix gel. So based on what the nurse says, it sounds like they did everything right. But, you know, I really want to compare the nurse's account to the doctor's account. Make sure there's nothing else that could be a problem. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to, we have the nurse's deposition transcript open. I'm going to take the doctor's deposition transcript and just drag it in here as well. And now look at this. Now we can compare these two documents right next to each other and we can look at them side by side. And so, you know, they both described 15 minutes. That seems reasonable. But you know what? Now that I see these two next to each other, I see something that is a little bit interesting. Oops. They both talk about shaving this bone spur. But, you know, the nurse uh, talks about, uh, let's see, they shave the bone spur off. Uh, I'm sorry, the doctor talks about shaving the bone spur off. But the nurse says something really interesting as well. Uh, she says that uh, Dr. Feld flushed the debris with saline. Well, that seems very reasonable, but Dr. Feld mentions that, uh, that they put this, uh, that they shaved this bone spur off after only, after only 10 minutes. Hmm, that sounds interesting. That may, makes me wonder about this. So first of all, I wanna connect these two because now I've just found an important relationship between two different documents. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line from the first document at, this, at the relevant location into the second document at the relevant location. And look what's happened. It's created a live ink link crisscrossing between these two documents. This is really powerful because later on, as I'm reading the nurse's transcript, if I wanna get back to the same relevant place in the doctor's transcript, I can just touch this little button here and look what it does. It brings the surgeon's transcript right back up and I can see the exact place that I was looking at before. So, okay, so this is, this is kind of significant. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say uh, that Dr. Feld flushed out the debris with saline. So we're gonna take this and pull this out because this actually could be really huge here. And likewise, Dr. Feld says, after 10 minutes, they discovered the bone spur. So together, this kind of gives the indication that maybe they flushed the bone spur out, they, they cleaned off, they took off the bone spur, then flushed out the joint with the saline, and in doing so, washed away the ICM matrix gel. But let's learn a little bit more first before we jump to that conclusion. So let's go back to the galaxidrin product info here and see if there's any, if it says anything about that matrix gel have, you know, if water could maybe damage it or anything like that while it's setting. And so let's take a look here. Hmm. Well, actually they do say something pretty important, right? They say that, uh, let's see, that the gel must be completely undisturbed right here. See, hmm, that, that's kind of, a, that could be a problem. And they specifically mentioned also that the, 
that uh, the joint needs to be uh, dry. They need to dry the bone fascia before you put the icing matrix gel in. So let's take this out here, leave it undisturbed for 15 minutes because it's starting to sound like they didn't actually do that. So we'll bring this over to our notes as well. But there is still that question. We don't really know if water could be a problem for this. Uh, but you know, I noticed we also have the material safety data sheet for galaxidrin. So let's take a look at that and see if there's anything there that could be helpful for us. And you know, as we look at it, actually, there is something helpful. The solubility in water of the galaxidrin uh, matrix gel is actually very, very high. So we're going to pull this out as well and incorporate this with the other notes. So you know, now it looks like we have our story coming together really, really nicely. In effect, we have, uh, we'll make a little note here. In effect, we, what we think happened is, oops, the surgeon shaved off a bone spur and washed away the debris also washing away the matrix gel prep solution. So this is our theory. Now, because this relates to all these different pieces here, one of the great things with liquid text is I can use ink links to actually show these connections. So I can actually just draw links here and draw links here into any other relevant points. Uh, and then as I move this around, you see these links stay so I can always find those sources again. One of the other really powerful things is as I go back to let's say the surgeon transcript and the nurse transcript. I can also just draw a link from the document into this note. So again, later on, when I'm somewhere else, I can always just tap this link and get right back to the source. This notion of being able to create these live links anywhere throughout your projects is one of the most striking and, and really unique features of liquid text, just how incredibly easy it is to connect different ideas together. So now that we've organized all this and we have this great workspace here with all these notes and we, we built a pretty compelling argument uh, in favor uh, of the patient, well, you know, what do we do with this? I mean, this, we have all this material spread over, you know, a 2D workspace, lots of documents. How do we share this? Well, this is another great thing about liquid text. I can just go to share and I can go to notes outline and you see what happened. It took my workspace, two dimensional workspace and arranged it into a nice, simple linear document that I can go and export to Microsoft Word. Bring it right into Word, make any final edits I need, and then I can send it off to the attorneys uh, or, uh, or to the judge, just like that. Of course, I can also ex export this as a PDF and in other ways too. So with that all said, um, one other thing I'll mention is that this is of course a really, really simple and sort of synthetic situation. Uh, in a real case, you would probably have pages and pages in your workspace and you know hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of, uh, of excerpts that you pulled out. And so one of the things that we noticed is you know, when people have larger workspaces, they need more sophisticated tools for organization. So one thing that we've added recently that we're really excited about is tagging. So let's say both all three of these excerpts here uh, are evidence that uh, or we review it and we decide the, uh, uh, the surgeon did everything right. So we'll select tags here and we'll select and we'll add some tags to these. We'll make the category review and we'll make the name of these correct. And see, I click add and look what happens. We add these nice little tags to these excerpts. But maybe on you know, further contemplation, I realize that actually the physician did something wrong in this case. So I'll go to tags, I'll remove correct and I'll add a new tag review and it corrects it, finishes it for me. And I'll add a uh, mistake and uh, I'll set that to be bright red and we'll add that. And so now we can add that in there. And of course I can now add these tags really easily to whichever of these excerpts I want. Maybe we take this one and we also add that this one is correct. Okay, so now let's say I wanna find out, well, I wanna find all the excerpts where a mistake was made very quickly. Well, instead of just having to look for it by eye, I can do a quick search for any mistake tags. Hit enter and it takes me right there. And of course I can zoom out and see the workspace as a whole to look for others and jump back and forth between them. So this is a kind of our nutshell demonstration. Let me pause here and uh, take any questions to start with.